Hey there, welcome back to the Path to Zion podcast where we are rediscovering the ancient way. Whether you are listening over at pathtozion.com or checking us out here on a YouTube channel, thank you. It's been a couple weeks again since we've done any new content outside of just posting commentary verses and things like that. To get right to it, what we're going to talk about today is this this principle of counterfeit, uh, of fake, fakery, things that are not real. And what we're going to do is basically something that springboarded out of some real life circumstances here in my house. Um, We've been reading through um, some of Yeshua's parables here in our house as a family. And um, my son recently said, I think it was just yesterday, that, you know, Dad, Yeshua sure liked using parables a whole lot to explain an idea or a thought or a principle, a, a biblical truth. And so I love doing that. It's one of my favorite things to to help give us some real-life practical examples and experiences that have spiritual meaning um, to them. And so we're going we're gonna to use a real-life circumstance here to discuss a deeper truth that will hopefully challenge us um, and be maybe hopefully somewhat enjoyable along the way. Now, you will likely not know this except for just a very few uh, people that are watching this program that we have started doing um, what would be considered a very minor uh, level of coin collecting here in our house. It's been fun. Um, a brother that I love kind of instigated the idea. He wasn't trying to, but that's what happened. Um, and it's really caught on. It's something that, that all of us are really enjoying, especially me and my son, to investigate um, old currency um, and coins and just learn about them and understand values and it's it's it seems like a really cool thing to do it's a sort of a new hobby for us here um i'd ideally i'd like to put just a few of them away and you know maybe flip them um for some much needed income here at our house right now it's kind of the ideal uh plan moving forward the reason i say that is because i have an example of something that i think will be uh, an intriguing consideration for a what? A parable of sorts to teach us something, to to give us a little bit of a real life reminder of something that can be uh, spiritually applied. So, so just last week, there was an online auction here in our area. It was online only. Um, and it was going to have, I saw the contents of the auction, and I knew they were going to have 10 hundred year old coins um, in a lot for the auction. Now, they specifically allow preview uh, of items. You can go and you can look at what it is you might bid on um, later that evening. And so, so my family, we, we went and we knew the coins were going to be there. We deliberately stopped because we wanted to look at them. We wanted to investigate them a bit. And we, of course, looked them over very well. My son and I went in. Um, we took them out of their little protective cases that they were in. We examined them. Um, we checked for certain things that we're learning for wear patterns, um, fonts, you know, the way the fonts are, are, are upon the coin, years, mint marks, certain things that you look for that we're learning in a very elementary stage here in our house. It's just fun. We held them in our hands, of course. Um, we wrote down the information according to each coin specifically. Um, the year, of course, the, the mint location of where it was made. Um, after we got home, we have a little book that my friend gave us and we ran all of their years to make sure the years lined up with the mint marks. Um, because there are some keys you need to be aware of if you're going to do this on any level at all. We looked into their values. We determined what we were willing to pay and we were, we set our limits. We were prepared to bid, um, when the auction went live, you know, later into that evening. Um, now, keep in mind that at the very beginning, I had some concerns with these coins because I'm very ignorant towards them. I'm not a, um, a coin aficionado who has studied this and can spot one from a million miles away that would be fake. And so I had some concerns and, and knowing full well that we are new to this, um, I held them in my hand one at a time and I, felt, I thought, well, these feel kind of light. Um, I'm not sure I'm holding it and, you know, I'm talking to my son. He's like, I don't know. They feel kind of cool. They feel right. Kind of. But to me, I'm like, eh, 
I don't know, they feel light. Each one of them felt noticeably light in my hand. We didn't have a pocket scale or anything um, to confirm that that was an issue, though, like on the spot. Um, so I kind of put that aside here in my mind. Um, and also I noticed that their coloring was just a little bit too uniform. Like we, we, we looked at 10 coins of varying years from like the late 1800s to the early 1900s. And uh, I don't know, they all look, they all look really similar. I've learned quickly that a lot of coins have differing colors and, and patinas and you know they just they each one is generally pretty individual as far as the way it looks if you lined them all up but these like i don't know they look really uniform to me um so otherwise well other they they look good to go and i always had in the back of my mind that i was convinced that this place was somewhere that if we if we got down the road and we bid on them for sure and if we won the auction i'm pretty sure that if, if anything went awry and they weren't deemed real, we would be able to take them back and get our money back. So I had that real, real close here in the corner of my mind. Okay, so now fast forward to several hours later. I don't know, it's 8.30 at night or so, and the auction's going, and the coins eventually came up, and we bid on the coins, <coughs> and we won them all because basically you get a choice. You, you get first choice, and then you for a set price and you choose how many you want in the lot according to that price. I said, well, for that price, we're getting all of them, all 10. Um, and we knew, we knew right away, um, that if in fact they were legitimate coins, we had tripled our money in value. Um, even though for us, we spent quite a bit of money on them. I knew according to several mint marks and dates that were not like super rare. Nobody on the earth has them except this one auction. They don't even talk like that. Um, it wasn't to those, those limits there, but I knew they were more valuable than what we were going to invest in them, which of course is the whole point, right? <laughs> um, so the next day we pick up the coins and, um, we, we give this nice gentleman, uh, what is to us a good amount of money. Um, and so when time allowed, we get out our book and we get out, you know, magnifying glass and, and we get out the scale and we're going over the coins. And as I'm going over the coins, okay, and again, we're talking about this main topic of, of, of counterfeit and, and discernment and how do we determine what is real and what is not? And do we take the time necessary to really peer into things? Because we have to keep talking. This isn't a, a coin collector's channel. We're talking spiritual matters here. <laughs> how, how thorough are we examining the things of our life? And the cost according to these things, what we retain and what we pass on and, and what we really take the necessary time to scrutinize when we can to know whether it's something we should apprehend to our lives or not. Just to be clear, in case anyone's thinking, I didn't tune into a coin channel. No, you didn't. It's okay. Moving along. Um, so we went over the, the these coins and as we're going through this battery of tests, um, my concerns continued to grow incrementally. Um, the, the major issue was that the weight of each coin was pretty significantly off. That coin in particular is supposed to be a certain weight. Um, and these were not hitting the mark. I'll, I brought them down here to show, um, because so you don't think I'm like ridiculous. I don't know where I can put it. Okay. So like, this is the coin, one of the 10 that we bought. Okay, it look well. It looks like a coin to me. Well, it is a coin, but like this is supposed to be 90% silver. Okay, which is the whole point of why you would buy it. Now, now that's that's one of the fake coins, and I'm going to show you some things that are quite intriguing. And all of this has a spiritual principle, friend. All of it. Okay, so if you're bored, that's fine. You can go watch. We have much deeper things here, of course, on the channel. This is more lighthearted today, but applicable nonetheless. So. Each coin that we weighed was significantly under what that coin, if it were real, was supposed to weigh. And after more time, I won't get into all the details, I had become convinced that all 10 of the coins were counterfeit. All 10. All 10 were not real silver coins from the 1800s and early 1900s. None of them. 0 for 10. Um, so later in the week, we took them to a coin shop, like where professionals live. 
um, in hopes that they would confirm what I had already determined on my own, that they were not real. And, and they did. Um, they called them out much quicker than I was capable. And so, so 10, 10 of these here were all deemed counterfeit, fake, okay? Not silver, not genuine at all. Now, as we move into some spiritual application here, it's worth noting, okay, here we go. If you're, if you're waiting for some spiritual things because you're, you're just ready to get to the meat of the matter, here we are. I had feelings when I bid on these coins, okay? I had feelings. I had emotions. I was excited because there were, there were two coins specifically that weren't worth, you know, thousands and millions of dollars, but they were valuable coins if they had been real. And so I'm, you know, I'm, we're new to doing this. We don't have hundreds of coins. We got, you know, just a little bit here. And we'll, we'll probably stay there, <laughs> especially after this. And so here's the thing, though. I had feelings and emotions when I'm bidding on these coins. And, like, we're watching it online, of course, and I've got the mouse in my hand, and I'm watching. I'm like, okay, we're, we're you know, let's say... You know, the auctioneer's going, and there's other individuals, of course, bidding against me, and it's 25 and 30, 35, 40, 45, 45, give me 50, give me 50, give me 55. And, and we get to the number, and I'm the high bidder, and we win the coins. And I had emotions, friend. I had feelings. I had legitimate excitement and feelings and emotion on winning these coins, okay? In my... I literally, I remember sitting back with my family. I'm like, I can't believe we just won all those coins for that price. I can't believe it. I can't believe it, right? <laughs> now, I'm not an idiot. I'm not, a, I'm not someone who doesn't think things through. It's like, well, if it's too good to be true, you know absolutely it is. I, I'm, I understand that principle. I live in skepticism towards pretty much everything in my whole life in a, in a healthy way. And so it's not like we blindly jumped into this. But I was in that moment, and I kept repeating, if these are real, we just really scored a big win here with this auction. If they're real, if they're real, because I had to, remember that compartment over here? I had to keep putting that here. Like, until we confirm that these are real, we're going to just kind of, okay, we're going to be thankful. We're going to be careful. We're just going to wait. And equally, I was excited. To my point, I was excited and I had real life emotions and, and feelings towards winning these valuable coins, okay? We couldn't believe that we were getting these coins for that price. This is awesome. I can't believe it. Oh, man, we're probably high-fiving. I don't remember. It wasn't even a week ago. But feelings alone, if we're going to get to the heart of the matter here, the meat of why I've got this camera on today, the feelings alone were not capable of generating results of value. Okay? You do understand we're talking spiritual things here. Spiritual things. Okay? Through the, the real life experiences in the natural. Repeating. Feelings alone that I had that were real now, they were real, real emotions. Those feelings were not capable of generating results that had real value. In other words, my emotions and my excitement towards this right here and nine of his friends, those emotions were real, but these guys are not. What I was getting all hyped up about was over a counterfeit, false, empty, hollow, meaningless coin. Okay? Ten of them. All right? Just before I move any further, well, I'll, I'll do this here. This, this, is, this is the coolest part to me. Uh, this is going to be very brief today. I find it interesting that the two primary factors that distinguished these 10 coins as counterfeit are two things, okay? Their sound and their substance. I'm not trying to be this big prophet today, but these things stand out to me. I'm learning a lot in the natural and in the spiritual as I go through these experiences of life. I hope that's how we live. That's why we're here, to be perfected into the likeness 
and, and sanctified into the image of our Son, into the Son, our Messiah, Yeshua, the Son of Elohim, to look like Him and learn and, and gain understanding and discernment and discernment and discernment. Why? So that we become mature men. So, two primary things that make this coin and nine of the others stand out as false counterfeits are their sound and their substance. Let me show you their sound real quick, okay? I'm going to try to do this on the, on the camera here with the microphone. We'll see how it works. This has not been practiced. Okay, now listen. Okay, listen. You hear that? That is two counterfeit coins hitting each other. I believe they call this the ping test. I didn't bring my scale down and all that stuff. Okay, and then I dropped one. Now here are two real coins, two real silver coins, okay? Let me, let me show you the fake ones again real quick. Hear that? Now here's the two real ones. You hear that difference, friend? You hear that? Holy cow. Day and night difference, right? Hopefully it picked it up. I would assume that it did. It's not hard to discern, okay? So, number one, spiritual principles here. Please, please listen. What these fake coins speak does not line up with what is true. Fake, real. False, true. Counterfeit, genuine. The sound that these two fake coins emit is a, a discernible sound that does not line up with how these two real ones do. Okay? They do not resound like true silver coins. Okay? Their sound is off. They're simply incapable of producing the true sound. Why? Because their metal makeup is junk by comparison. Okay? Which leads us to number two, their substance. That's their sound. They're incapable of producing the correct sound that agrees with what is true. Silver. You understand what I'm saying here? I don't think this is too hard to grasp today, is it? Their substance is off is the second thing. In this case, these two coins and the rest of them were markedly too light. Okay? Look the same. Marks are the same. Coloring's the same in many ways. A lot of these things are the same as the real. But man, the, the second each one of these individual coins sat on a scale, oh no. These are not the same. Off like by six grams. Five grams, six. That's a lot when you're talking a coin this size. Okay? So they simply do not possess the weight and the substance that would reveal that they are genuine. Although they look pretty convincing on the outside, I would say. On the surface, they look pretty good. Especially to an immature novice like me. But their substance, in reality, is junk. Okay? It has no value whatsoever. It's all a show. It's all a show, friend. And then without discernment and time and testing, we could fill up a treasure chest of these. And look what we have. Look, I got the feelings. I got the emotions. I got all the buzz. But you open that up and you start pulling them out and you weigh them and you start pulling them out and you start dinging them together. You know what you got, friend? You got a treasure chest of nothing. All you've got's emotions. All you've got's feelings, friend. I don't want us to be that way as we bring this to a conclusion and a purpose in case you're wondering. <laughs> First John chapter 4. Please listen. This is really awesome. Starts out beloved, okay? Not just a wide net of everybody on the whole earth. Beloved. Hey, you brothers and sisters right here, listen. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether or not they are from Elohim. Okay? <laughs> so, beloved, you people, you set apart holy, consecrated people, believe 
Do not believe every spirit. Believe here is don't place your trust in and don't place your confidence in every spirit. Well, okay, well, how do I know what is Holy Spirit, Kadosh, set apart spirit saying? How do I know? Well, you test the spirits to see whether or not they're from Elohim. This is what's awesome about this. Test here, test the spirits to see whether or not they're from Elohim, is examine to prove, scrutinize to see if, in fact, genuine, to deem worthy, valuable. And lastly, and this is what I, why I added this, added this verse specifically here, to deem genuine as with metals. Okay? That's why this is so awesome to me and how Father's teaching me just through practical day-to-day -day life circumstances. This is a real-life example for me and my household. Look, it's not about, well, we made a mistake and we did this. We're getting money back, all these things. Fine, that, that doesn't even matter. The point is, are we learning the spiritual lesson within this, friend, of examining, which we did. We did. We examined. We examined, it, we examined it, them, with our limited understanding on the front end, and we examined them much thoroughly on the back end. And by that examination in both parts, both parts, especially the, the latter, we will be um, given restitution. We're given restitution. Praise Yahweh. It's not always the case, though. And either way, there's a cost, and we, we're not going to get into all that. There's a cost. Yes, for our lack of discernment, for my um, level of, of discernment being too low in this case. And so, in, in culmination, again, if we're, if we're talking about this substance and the sound, okay, one of these has value and substance. One of them has a sound that produces what something of value says, right? We have to be a discerning people. We talk about that endlessly here on the program. I know what we're doing, where we're going, what we're listening to, what we read, what we value, what we treasure and put away in that treasure chest of our lives, what we have taken the proper time to filter through the word, through the word, that is our, that is our, our, what I call it, the, the ding test, the ping test. That's what the word of Elohim should be for you, friend. That's what it should be for us. That doesn't, it's not just, the, that doesn't sound right. No, according to what Yahweh speaks, according to what Holy Spirit is declaring through the Torah and the prophets, through the words of Messiah, through the righteous men that went before us. You know what, friend? That doesn't meet the test. That doesn't meet the test standards. That doesn't pass the scrutiny of the word of my Father, the Almighty. I'm sorry. The sound is off. It doesn't line up with what is true. And the other one is the substance. I'm sorry, friend, what you're saying about, like, we just need to love one another and we just need to gather and sing what the Spirit's saying and you tell me and you tell me and you tell me it's the spiritual free-for-all in Jesus. I'm sorry, friend. I'm not seeing substance. I'm not seeing something of, of, of true value because I, here, here's my point from the beginning. I see emotion. I see feelings and those are real. Those are real. I had those real feelings for this fake coin worth pennies. I had real feelings. I had a real experience. I had an experience. I had an emotion. But as I said earlier, what did I say? Feelings alone cannot generate results of value, of substance. My emotions did not make that coin turn valuable. It was still counterfeit and fake despite the emotion. So we have to know, have we taken the proper time to hear what the word is saying 
according to these things that come to our life, that doesn't line up with my Father's Word. It's got to go. It doesn't line up with the sound of truth that comes from my Father's words and from Holy Spirit speaking what Yeshua said and Yeshua said what the Father said. Okay? What are we carrying around that does not agree with Father's ways and commands? Well, we need to know. Ignorance, ignorance did not just excuse my, my purchase of those fake coins, the counterfeit coins. I still had a cost, a price was paid for the counterfeit coins. Likewise, in the spiritual things of our life, we need to be informed and learned and know Father's commands in order to walk rightly in them. We have to know what is right, what is true, what has substance, and what is truly genuine at the core. It is not up for our own discretion nor emotion. It is costly to live undiscerning. It's costly. If we had not checked into these coins, if I had just said, man, look at us, look at that deal, wow, look at what we have, put them on a display case and hung them on the wall or buried them under the ground in, in, in the pasture, whatever, it would be nothing. It would have no value. It was all for show. So unless we stop to learn and to investigate these things, these spiritual things in our lives, we may never even know that what we could possibly possess is merely a counterfeit after all. Discern well, friends. We will be responsible to know the treasures of our heart and what we add to it by the sound and by the substance. You've been watching the Path to Zion podcast. What are we doing? We're rediscovering the incredible ancient way. Father's ways are so awesome. I hope you're learning. I hope this challenged you like it does me. Uh, stick around. Go to pathdesign.com. Jump into the comments over on Facebook. Thank you so much for watching. Amen.